In this video, we will solve the LP shown here using the two-phase simplex method. Okay, we start by converting the problem in the standard form. For that, we convert all the inequality constraints into equality constraints. So we have maximize 6x1 plus x2 subject to negative x1 plus 3x2 and now we add the slack variable whenever you have a less than or equal to constraint plus s1 is equal to 6 then the second constraint is already equality so we just copy it x1 minus 3x2 is equal to 6 and the last constraint is of greater than or equal to type, so we need to subtract an excess variable from the left-hand side. So we'll have x1 plus x2 minus e3 is equal to 1. Note that we denote it by e3, even though there is no e1 or e2 introduced before. This is just to indicate that this is the excess variable for the third row. And then, of course, we have the non-negativity of all the variables x1, x2, s1, e3 are all non-negative. So now we have our LP in the standard form. We only have the equality constraints and non-negativity of all the variables. All right, so second part, we will set up the auxiliary problem. For that, we go back to the standard form representation of our LP and analyze every row to see if it has a slack or excess variable that we could use as the basic variable for that row. For that, we need to make sure that when we set all the original variables to zero, the remaining variable will be non-negative. All right, so because we have non-negativity constraints, we need to make sure that all the basic variables are non-negative. So by setting x1 and x2 to 0 in the first row, s1 is equal to 6. So we check s1 works for this constraint as the starting basic variable. The second constraint is the equality constraint. So there is no slack or excess variable we could use as the starting basic variable. So we'll need to introduce an artificial variable that will denote by a2, again to indicate that this variable belongs to the second row initially. Then finally, for the third row, if we set x1 and x2 to 0, you have e3 is equal to negative 1, so it doesn't work as a starting basic variable, therefore we'll have to introduce an artificial variable a3 here. Alright, now we are ready to set up the auxiliary problem. The auxiliary problem will be to minimize the summation of all the artificial variables. In our case, we have two artificial variables a2 and a3 subject to all the constraints that we have in the standard form representation of our LP, plus the artificial variables added to the left-hand sides whenever we need them. All right, so you have minus x1 plus 3x2 plus s1 is equal to 6, x1 minus 3x2 plus a2 is 6, and uh, x1 plus x2 minus e3 plus a3 is equal to 1. And we have the non-negativity again of all the variables. x1, x2, s1, e3, a2, a3 are all non-negative. Now we could proceed to setting up the tableau for the first phase of the simplex from here. But uh, before we do that, we'll take one additional step and we'll convert this minimization problem into a maximization problem. This is not strictly necessary, but uh, because we are used to solving maximization problems and, you know, we discussed the rules for entering variable for maximization problems before and all the problems we considered in examples were maximization problems so far, I prefer to stick to the same type of problem and convert it to maximization form. So this problem will be equivalent then to maximizing z equal to negative a2 
minus a3, maximizing the negative of this sum of two variables is the same as minimizing the sum. So this is an equivalent problem. And then uh, subject to all the same constraints. And one more thing before we set up the Tableau, looking at the objective, we are going to move everything to the left hand side so that we can directly copy the coefficients of all the variables in the Tableau. So we'll set this equation as z plus a2 plus a3 is equal to zero. All right, so now we are ready to set up the Tableau and initialize phase one of the two-phase simplex method. Let me denote this by C. So we set up the Tableau. We start with the objective. So we have the coefficients of one for Z, A2 and A3. And the rest entries are zeros in this row. And symbolically, we'll put z for the basic variable, but there is no really basic variable for row zero. Now, row one, you have negative one for x1, three for x2, s1 has the coefficient of one, and the rest of the coefficients in this row are zeros, and the right hand side is six. So you have zero here as well. And the basic variable for this row is S1. All right, next, row two. So we have the coefficient of one for X1, negative three for X2, one for A2, six for right hand side, and the rest coefficients are zero in this row. And we have the basic variable given by A2 for this row. Finally, the third constraint, row three. So we have the coefficients of one for X1 and X2, negative one for E3, one for A3. The right hand side is one. The rest coefficients are zero and the basic variable is a3. So we have this tableau here, but we are a little short of calling this an initial tableau for phase one. Why? Because when we look at our basic variables a2 and a3, we see that they're represented in the objective. But remember that the basic variables are supposed to have the coefficient of zero in the objective, and in fact, in all the rows except for the row where that variable is basic. So for example, for A2, I'm supposed to have a column here where the entry is equal to one in row where A2 is basic and uh, the remaining entries in this column are supposed to be zeros, but they're not. We see that we have a coefficient of one for A2 in the objective. Similarly for A3, same situation. So how do we take care of this issue? We need to eliminate this element and this element from row zero. So what we're gonna do, we are going to do it in one shot and uh, we will multiply this row by negative one. We'll multiply this row by negative one and we will add the resulting rows to row zero. So essentially, to get the initial tableau for phase one, what we need to do, we need to replace row zero with uh, the previous row zero minus row two and minus row three. So we'll do just that to obtain the new tableau, which will be used as the initial tableau for phase one. Since the only change we'll have in this tableau will occur at row zero, I'm going to copy what I have here and just modify row zero. All right, so the coefficient for x1 is going to be zero minus one minus one. So we have negative two here. 
then we will have the coefficient for x2 will be 0 plus 3 minus 1 is 2. For s1 the coefficient remains uh, 0. For e3 we'll have 0 plus 1 is 1. Then for a2 it's going to be 1 minus 1, 0, just like we intended. Similarly for a3 it's going to be 0. And finally, the right hand side is going to be minus 6 minus 1 is negative 7. All right, so we obtain this uh, tableau, which we now can use as the step 0 tableau for phase 1. Okay, so so far this is what we have. So we started by converting the problem to the standard form. Then we set up the auxiliary problem, converted it into maximization form, and then we set up the tableau. We saw that uh, we still need to take one preliminary step before we can proceed with the simplex method, because for the simplex method to start, we need the basic feasible solution, and in a basic feasible solution, the coefficients for all the basic variables in the objective must be zero. So therefore we eliminate these two coefficients by applying elementary row operations and it makes sense to combine these two elementary row operations in one because they're very straightforward. You just multiply this row by negative one, you multiply this by negative one and then you add them together to row zero to obtain this right here. So we proceed to phase one. So this is our step zero tableau. The initial tableau we start the phase one with. And I'm going to change the color for what we do for step one. So we start by picking the entering variable. We look at row zero and find a variable with a negative coefficient. We see that there is only one candidate, which is x1. So we use x1 as entering. And then we perform the ratio test. So for the ratio test, we pay attention to the right hand side and to the positive entries of the entering column. Okay. So for the first row, we have a negative entry in the entering column. Therefore, the ratio test doesn't apply. For the second row, we have the ratio of six. And for the third row, we have 1 over 1, which is 1. And we have the ratio test winner in the last row. So A3 will be the living variable. So luckily, we already have 1 for the pivot element. And we don't need to do anything to it. We just need to copy the last row and uh, replace a3 with x1 as the basic variable for this row. If this entry was not equal to 1, then we would start by dividing this row by whatever the entry is in this position for the pivot element. Okay, so I'll start by copying this last row in the new tableau. So we have 0, 1, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 1. And the new basic variable in this row is going to be x1 instead of a3. a3 leaves the basis. So next, we will compute the new row 0. All right, so to compute the new row 0, what we need to do, we need to eliminate the entry in the entering column at row 0. So we have negative 2 here right now. We need to convert it to 0 using the pivot element. So for that, we need to multiply the pivot element by 2 and add it to our row 0 element here. So therefore, what we need to do for row 0 will be the following. So we'll have R0 plus 2 times R3. So we'll have 1 for Z entry still, 0 for X1. Then 2 times 1 plus 2 is 4. Uh, here we have zeros in both rows, so still 0. 2 times negative 1 plus 1 is negative 1. Then uh, 0 for a2. 
2 plus 0 for a3 is 2, then 2 plus negative 7 is negative 5, and uh, z as the so-called basic variable in row 0. We are done with row 0, so then for row 1, we have the coefficient of negative 1 here. To eliminate it, we need to add the row 3 to row 1. So for the first row, we'll have r1 plus r3. So we have 0 in this position still, then 0 here. So 3 plus 1 is 4. 1 plus 0 is 1. Uh, 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1. Then 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. And 6 plus 1 is 7. Uh, this is the new value for S1 in the new basic feasible solution. So S1 is going to change from 6 to 7. Then uh, finally, the second row. For the second row, to convert this entry into 0, we need to multiply the last row by negative 1 and add it to our second row. So therefore, here we'll have R2 minus R3 to obtain the entries in this row. So we'll have 0, 0, negative 4, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 5, and A2 is still the basic variable in this row. And this completes step 1 tableau. So this is our step 1 tableau. So we can see that there is still a negative entry in row 0. Therefore, we need to proceed to step 2. Let me change the color again to do the computations for the second step. So E3 is the only candidate for the entering variable. And then we do the ratio test to obtain the living variable. So again, we'll look at the entries in the right hand side and the positive entries in this column and do the ratios. So the ratio doesn't need to be performed for the first and the last row, but uh, the only row that restricts the upward move of the variable E3 would be the second row. And the ratio from this row is five by one, which is five. So this is the winner of the ratio test. And again, luckily we have the pivot element of one here. We don't need to divide it by anything in order to obtain the new version of this row. We just need to replace A2 with E3 as the basic variable for this row. So we'll use the step one tableau to obtain the step two tableau. We start by copying uh, row two. except for we replace A2 with E3 as the basic variable in this row. All right, and then uh, we apply the same process as in the previous step to eliminate all the entries in this column other than uh, the pivot element. So we have negative one for row zero in this position. Therefore, what we need to do is to add row zero to the pivot row which is row two in order to obtain the new row zero. So we'll have R zero plus R two for this row. We have one, zero, four plus negative four is zero. Then we have zero here. We have zero for E three, of course, and then one for A two, uh, two minus one for A three which is one and then negative five plus five for the right hand side we get zero and this completes row zero then for row one same thing we need to add uh, this row to the second row in order to obtain zero in this position here so we'll have r1 plus r2 here so we'll have zero, zero. So we sum up the entries in these two rows to obtain the new row one. Zero, one, zero, one, zero, 12. 
and S1 is the basic variable in this row. So the new value for S1 is going to be 12 in the new basis. And finally, row 3. Again, we have the coefficient of negative 1. So to obtain the new row 3, we add row 3 to row 2. And we obtain 0, 1, negative 3, 0, 0, 1, 0, 6. And the basic variable is x1 for this row. All right, this completes step two. And in fact, this completes phase one because we see that we arrived at the optimal solution for the first phase for the auxiliary problem because there are no negative entries in row zero anymore. This tableau is optimal and we obtain the optimal solution for our phase one. And we see that because the objective is zero and uh, both artificial variables are non-basic, we are going to proceed to phase two in order to find the optimal solution. So we need to drop the columns A2 and A3 and obtain a new tableau for phase two. Let me denote the next step by E, phase two initialization. So for phase two initialization, we first copy the optimal tableau for phase one. And then we are going to drop the columns corresponding to the artificial variables. So we're going to remove this column and this column. Use them and lose them, right? And the second thing we need to do is we need to go back to the original objective instead of the auxiliary problems objective that we had before. So our original objective is 6x1 plus x2. Which is the same as saying that z minus 6x1 minus x2 is 0. So the coefficients for x1 and x2 are going to change. Let me erase what we had here and put in the new coefficients. So we'll have negative 6 for x1 and negative 1 for x2. And uh, looks like we got a tableau here with less columns, right? But again, this is not an initial tableau for simplex method yet because we need to make sure that all the basic variables have zero coefficients in row zero. And now if I look at my list of basic variables right now, they're S1, E3, and X1. And uh, X1 is a basic variable, yet it has a negative coefficient in the objective here, so we need to convert this to zero in order to proceed to phase two. In general, if we had uh, more of the basic variables among our initial variables, let's say if x2 was also basic, I would need to eliminate this entry as well before we proceed to the next uh, step. In order to eliminate this entry from row 0, what I need to do, I'm going to use the row where x1 is basic, of course, and I'm going to multiply that row by 6 and add it to row 0 to obtain the new row zero all right so what we do we replace row zero that we had before with the previous row zero plus six times row three and we obtain the following tableau And for row 0, I have 1 here, of course, then 0 for x1, then 6 times negative 3 is negative 18, plus negative 1 is negative 19, then 0, 0 plus 6 times 0 is 0, still 0 for e3. The right hand side is going to be 6 times 6 is 36 plus 0 is 36 and this is our objective value for the starting iteration of phase 2 and then we copy the rest of the entries for rows 1 through 3 so we'll have 0 0 0 1 0 12 s1 and then row 2 will be 0 0 
negative 4, 0, 1, 5 and e3 is the basic variable here. And finally, the last row would be 0, 1, negative 3, 0, 0, 6, x1. Now we are ready to proceed uh, to phase 2. We found the initial feasible tableau for this phase and for the original problem, right? So there are no more artificial variables. This is just a basic feasible solution for the original problem. And I want to reiterate that uh, the objective of phase one is just to find a basic feasible solution for the original problem whenever one exists, right? So whenever the problem is feasible, the output of phase one will be a basic feasible solution for our problem. And when it is infeasible, then the auxiliary problem will give a non-zero optimal value and we'll conclude that the problem is infeasible and there is no phase two. The answer is the problem is infeasible. Now we are ready for part F, phase two. So our step zero tableau is given by what we just produced in the previous step. So there is only one candidate for the entering variable, only one negative entry in row zero. So the entering variable is gonna be x2. So we perform the ratio test. Uh, to perform the ratio test, we again focus on the right hand side column and the entering column. And we are looking for the positive entries in the entering column. But we can see that there is none and we cannot uh, perform the ratio test. So the ratio test doesn't produce any result, which means that we can increase x2 to plus infinity without violating any constraints. And our objective is going to tend to plus infinity as a result. So therefore, the problem is unbounded. And this is our answer. Well, since this problem only has two variables, we can easily solve it graphically and verify that our answer is indeed correct. All right, so the feasible region for our problem is given by this green ray right here. So the feasible points must be located within this area right here between the lines. And uh, because this is the equality constraint, they must be all located on the green line. And uh, note that uh, the green line is parallel to the line for the first constraint and the points are feasible with respect to the first constraint if they're below this line. Uh, therefore, all points on the green ray will remain feasible. And this is our isoprofit line. We can see if we move it uh, towards the increase, we can go towards positive infinity and stay within the feasible region. Therefore, the problem is unbounded, just like we concluded with the two-phase simplex method. Optima, can you imagine? I just got infinite profit.